pre-algebra. Today we're going to be doing quadrilaterals. Hopefully you remember what a quadrilateral is. And let's take notes in our notes notebook. Quadrilaterals. You take notes in your notes notebook. Don't do it on that sheet that I gave you. First of all, quadrilaterals are four-sided. And we're just going to jot down the different kinds that there are. So you can just make a list. And we're going to say some things about them. First, we're going to have a trapezoid. This is a lot of review. So first we have a trapezoid. This is called a trapezoid. Your secret word today is tape. A trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. If you don't know what parallel means, parallel means they cr never cross each other. And from now on, I'm not going to write out the word for parallel. Actually, I didn't even write it out there, did I? I did not spell that correctly. Parallel. And the symbol for parallel is this right here. And that's what I'm going to use for, from now on. One pair of parallel sides. And here's how I show that is I put the little arrows here like this. So that means that those two sides are parallel. Now, there's a special kind of trapezoid that's called an isosceles trapezoid. So we're going to put that in parentheses, an isosceles trapezoid. This, uh, not every trapezoid is an isosceles, but this one is. An isosceles trapezoid has um, its non-parallel sides are congruent. Non-parallel sides, I remember congruent means they're the same measurement. So that would mean that this side's congruent to this side, and that's what those symbols mean. It also means that the angles, the opposite angles are congruent. So there's an isosceles trapezoid, or if we just had a normal trapezoid, it would look something like this. That's just a normal trapezoid. Um, the, the special kind is isosceles trapezoid. Okay, next we have a parallelogram. And I know we've done this before. I'm going to give you a little bit more on some of these. Parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, and it has opposite sides and angles congruent. And it also has opposite sides parallel. Remember, I'm not writing any of that down. Okay, so I'm going to sketch one here. Oh, let's see. It probably is going to look like this. So here's my parallelogram. Draw it something like this. We've got opposite sides and angles congruent. So here's my opposite angles that are congruent. And these are, now I have to do two arcs on one of them and only one on the other. Also, these two sides are congruent, and those two sides are congruent. And another thing is that the opposite sides are parallel. So here's how we'll show that. <coughs> and that's a parallelogram. Okay? All right, next we have a rectangle. And here's what a rectangle looks like. You should hopefully know this. Here's our rectangle, and we'll say a few things about our rectangle. Our rectangle has four right angles. And you know what? It has everything that's true about a parallelogram. So it has opposite sides and angles congruent. Opposite sides and angles, actually I'm going to say parallel. Or opposite sides and angles are congruent, and opposite sides are parallel. So that's what's true. So we can put our four right angles in here. We can also show that those are congruent and these are congruent. Also, these are parallel and these are parallel. And these are parallel. Okay? So that's what we have that's true about a rectangle. Next, we have a rhombus. A rhombus. Oh, whoops. I didn't write the word rectangle here, so let's make sure we do that. Okay, next we have a rhombus. And a rhombus has four congruent sides. Four congruent sides. And it also has opposite sides parallel. And it also has opposite angles congruent. That's the symbol for angles. I'll just write that word out so it's not quite so. Well, this angle right here is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. Also, my opposite sides are parallel. That's a lot of marks. Hopefully, you're not drawing these tiny. So that's my rhombus. And then my last one, and everything that's true 
is about everything that we've done so far is true about this, and that is a square. And for your secret problem, you're going to do all the markings on it. I'm going to tell you what's true, so let's draw our square. So a square has four right angles. It has four congruent sides. And it also has opposite sides parallel. So I want you to put all those markings on there. The markings for four right angles, the markings for four congruent sides, and the markings for opposite sides parallel. All right, now we're going to talk about how many degrees are in there. So I just would like you, to, in your notes, draw this rectangle. And if you could draw a rectangle, you could draw a trapezoid. We could just do a regular quadrilateral. That isn't anything. And we're going to divide it in, we're going to draw it in a diagonal. So here's a diagonal. Here's a diagonal. And there's a diagonal. And if you look, that divides it into two triangles. I know that in one triangle, there's 180 degrees. So in two triangles, there's 360. So in each of these quadrilaterals, there's 360 degrees. So let's put a start and say a quadrilateral. is 360 degrees. That's something that we know. There's 360 degrees in a, tri in a quadrilateral. So let's do a few. And let's say this is 50 degrees, 90, 80, and X. So the process we're going to do, we're going to add them up. 80 plus 90 plus 50. Let's see, 9 is 17 plus 5 is 220. Then we take 360 minus 220. And that gives me 140. So x is 140, and we put the degree sign there. All right, next one. Let's say that we have that isosceles trapezoid, and I know that the opposite. I know that this angle is congruent to this angle, and I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. And let's say that this angle right here is um, 60 degrees. And I want you to find all the rest of the angles. We'll call this one x, y, and z. Well, x is easy. It's going to be 60 degrees, isn't it? Now, how are we going to find these other two? Well, let's see. I'm going to take 60 times 60. I'm going to see what's left. That's 120. So if I take 360 minus 120, that gives me 240. So that means Y and Z together, actually, I should label both of those Y because they're congruent, aren't they? So if that one's Y, this one's Y. So Y and Z have to equal 240, and they're equal to each other. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 240 and I'm going to divide that by 2. And when I do that, I get 120 degrees. So my angle is 120 degrees. I have a secret problem for you to do, and then we're done. If this is 60 degrees and this is 70 degrees and this is um, 140 degrees, I'd like you to find the value of angle X. And that's all I have for you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you later.